welcome to the 1986 Civic Award Program hosted by the Cupertino City Council who will pre be presenting tonight's awards. We are very grateful to be here at the Helene Madsen Theater at the Monta Vista High School. These awards honor those individuals and groups in Cupertino whose volunteer efforts have made this community a better place in which to live. Cupertino is a very special place, I think you'll all agree. And one of the truly remarkable characteristics of Cupertino is the number of people who get involved and the breadth and the depth of that involvement in many, many volunteer activities. Some of them in a very small way where very few people, if any, know that they've even done anything, but their efforts have made a difference. And some in a much larger way, which is more readily recognizable. And because it seemed important to us to provide some sort of recognition for these people, the council decided some four years ago to set up this awards program. This is not in competition with the Citizen of Achievement Award given out by the Chamber of Commerce annually, which honors people for their efforts over a span of many, many years. It is rather to recognize people who have done something special for the community this year. Tonight's awards are being given in the areas of community service, volunteerism, education, business, recreation, and cultural arts. In addition, two of tonight's honorees will receive special recognition for particularly meritorious service for having earned the prestigious City Award. The people whom we are honoring tonight have been recommended by persons in the community who recognized their efforts and thought they were worthy of being recognized here. Nomination forms were reviewed by a committee composed of one representative from each of our advisory commissions to the City Council. Each person here tonight who's honored will receive an engraved paperweight, a proclamation from the city, and later on in about two weeks by mail, a photograph taken as they receive their award. Photography tonight is by Bob Anderson Photography. Interest, in the interest of time, I'm going to ask each recipient to come forward when his or her name is called and while their uh, record is being read. Tonight's proceedings are being taped by Kellen Yamada and Pete Coglanese. Before we begin, I should like to publicly acknowledge and thank all the people who have made tonight's program possible. First of all, we certainly need to acknowledge all the efforts made so cheerfully by the people here at Monta Vista High School in helping us get this together. In addition to Kellen and Pete at the TV camera and Bob Anderson, our photographer, I'd like to acknowledge the fine piano music by Brad Lee that you've heard earlier. Later on in the program, we'll be entertained by the Monta Vista Madrigals. I'd also like to acknowledge the advice and support that we received from Steve Dowling and his fine staff in the City Park and Rec Department. Laura Newman, the City Manager's Secretary, greeted you this evening as you came in and helped some of you and me with corsages. She also did typing and follow-up, and a great deal of that is required for any project of this magnitude. And helping her so very ably, Tracy Coglin. Barbara Brown, assistant to the city manager, provided invaluable assistance, and we thank her in absentia tonight because she had a baby girl two days ago. <laughs> Having mentioned him twice, I'll ask our city manager, Bob Quinlan, to stand for just a minute. Bob, thank you. And right here up front, the person who really put all this together, our community relations officer, Carol Skurich. A very sincere and heartfelt thank you for all your effort in the many hours and always with a smile. Thank you. I'd like to remind you that after the ceremonies here this evening, there will be refreshments served in the building next door to my right, your left, in the cafeteria. And now, to begin the awards presentation tonight in the area of cultural arts and community services, I present your Mayor Pro Tem, Reed Sparks. The first category being announced tonight is that of cultural arts. 
The Civic Service Award for Cultural Arts is awarded to those who have added to the cultural enrichment of our community. Our first award winner is Nancy Goodwillie. Should please come forward. Thank you. As a dedicated reader of the Cupertino scene, I can't appreciate Nancy's efforts. And Jim Jackson, you should have had her. <laughs> for six years, Jim was the editor, the chief, and everything. And for over a year, Nancy has volunteered her time and expertise in putting together the Cupertino scene. We are fortunate to have someone like Nancy who has worked with the staff uh, because of her background in layout and design. She knows what it takes to put a publication together, how to work with deadlines. Every month she's there to help make sure the scene is out, not only in publication, but getting out to the readers. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. Our next recipient is Michelle Mann. Michelle, would you please come forward? Michelle first became involved in television as a volunteer producer for local programs. Since then, we have been able, able to see her uh, not stop her enthusiasm producing, for producing programs all over the city. Michelle was instrumental in providing live cable for the city of Cupertino meetings to residents, uh, created the first live call-in program for the mayor, uh, produced the bi-monthly magazine program, Cupertino Insight, and covered issues and events in Cupertino, not to mention the documentaries she has produced in our city at all other, uh, other community events over the city of Cupertino, not to mention the July 4th celebration uh, and the Cherry Blossom Festival. Uh, Michelle is also a dedicated commissioner on the Cable TV Advisory Committee. As chairperson of the committee, she has helped make our community access channel one of the best in, this, in the county and in the state of California. And I may say even in the nation, we've gotten some accolades from throughout the nation. She is sincerely committed to ensuring public access and was a key component of the Cupertino's success in this area. Congratulations, Michelle. Just, just like to say she did such a great job in Cupertino that Foothill took her away from us. <laughs> Okay, our next category announced tonight is that of community service. Uh, the Civic Service Award for Community Service is a broad category, uh, and you'll see by the diversity of our recipients that they uh, re represent a wide array of programs and services. Generally, the award for community services given to a person or organization has, uh, that has formulated a program which serves the community or brought recognition through a unique contribution. Our first award winner in this category is not a person, but rather an organization, the Cupertino Community Services. I would like to ask Linda Hugger, President of the Board of Directors, to come forward to accept the award on behalf of the Cupertino community. They were organized in 1972 as the Cupertino Roundup. Uh, when federal funding was discontinued in 1976, they reorganized as the Cupertino Community Services. They have two paid employees and a multitude of volunteers. They expand their services each year. In August of 1985, they served 144 clients, but in August of 86, they have served uh, 266 clients. They administer a program providing volunteers for essential needs such as food and shelter to needy families in the greater Cupertino area. Uh, work with the Cupertino Fremont PTA to coordinate the holiday basket project, provide transportation for seniors and disabled, uh, refers services to residents facing emergency situations such as alcoholism and child abuse. The list goes on and on. Uh, we are very fortunate to have such an organization in our community. Uh, congratulations. I'd just like to, to say one, one quick thing. Every year we have a barbecue, and that's one of our major fundraisers. So for the people watching this in television and out there, every year you can get a great barbecue <laughs> for a real reasonable price. Okay, next, uh, Yvette Del Prado. Would you please come forward? Um, okay. Yvette is uh, superintendent for a Cupertino Union School District, but her community involvement goes far beyond an excellent, her excellent leadership provided by the uh, school system. She is involved with the Chamber of Commerce as Director and Vice President of Business Development. In fact, she received the Chamber's 1986 President's Award for Outstanding Service. She is a strong member of the Cupertino Quota Club in the Northwest YMCA, uh, co-chairperson of the 1985 Dickens Fair, and chairperson of the Polaris, a division of the Boy Scouts, which is responsible for scouting programs for over 2,000 youth in Cupertino. 
And then once in a while she goes on a vacation. No. <laughs> in 1985, she joined together with the city of Cupertino a unique partnership to develop surplus school sites for recreational benefit for the citizens of Cupertino. The list of involvement for our community goes on and on. Thank you, Yvette, for this dedication to the community. And believe it or not, every once in a while I see her at the donut wheel in Cupertino. <laughs> she has only a few donuts, not too many. Okay, our next recipient is Catherine Gassage. Catherine has been living and working in our community since 1905 and has been a volunteer in time and energy, and she's also the first postmaster in Cupertino. Uh, she is a charter member of the Seroptimus International, Sunnyvale Cupertino, where all the members consider her a role model for the community service and volunteerism. Being involved in community is a way of life for Catherine. From being a funding member and officer of the Cupertino Historical Society, to her work as a board member of the Cupertino Community Services, to her many years as the, uh, the service of uh, the Girl Scouts, Catherine offers uh, support and assistance to individuals in distress and illness, wherever, whomever and wherever they may be, including strangers. Congratulations, Catherine. Thank you. Would Margaret, Margaret Harami come forward? Uh, Marge is one of those tireless volunteers who without her help, organizations would be nothing. She has volunteered for the League of Women Voters for over 20 years, and I've seen her at many league functions for the last 20 years. And over the last two as president, Marge's responsibilities have ranged from coordinate editor to the election extra, but out, uh, but out by the league, to supervising candidates' forums for Public Access Channel 3. As president of the league, she kept the league informed of any government actions. Personally, uh, personally spoke before governing bodies and communities throughout the city, county, and state, and keeps top on all areas uh, of concern, and with her piles and piles of paperwork, uh, keeps the uh, community going and going. I would like to thank her on behalf of the city of Cupertino. <laughs> I think, I think in my 13 years in local government, she's been the moderator at least four times. <laughs> okay, now I'd like to introduce a fellow colleague on the Cupertino City Council, John Gatto, and he will present the rest of the awards for community service. Good evening. This is really a, a true pleasure. I think we started this activity about four years ago, and we had the first one at the uh, Petit Trianon, and we were, even at that night, uh, bursting at the seams. And it's a true indication of the real cooperative effort and volunteerism that exists in this community, and it's really a true pleasure to do this this evening. Continuing in the category that, uh, of community service that Reed began, uh, the first nominee I'd like to present would be Marilyn Howard. Marilyn has demonstrated a real service to this community, particularly through the PTA's health and welfare projects. Those of you that are familiar with the clothes closet, it's an, op it's an effort to collect clothes for the needy and help healthy in this area. Marilyn has been very active in pursuing that activity. She also is active in the school and in volunteer efforts and has been active in many of the political efforts in this community. Marilyn, we thank you very much for your efforts. Find the right file. You can watch our first. I think the hardest part of receiving these awards is going up and down those stairs. <laughs> the next uh, award, I uh, really a pleasure to do this one, is to uh, Pat Jackson. Pat, would you come forward, please? And uh, Jim, you'll be glad to know that we are giving out plaques tonight, so that even Pat will get a, a, a plaque. Uh, Pat has been a, a resident of this community for 22 years, and those of you that have been around for that period of time know that she's been actively involved, along with her husband Jim, in many, many activities.
but we'll just try and enumerate a few this evening. Uh, seeing the cameras that are here tonight, we should all know that Pat has been actively involved in the Channel 3 and Channel 30 efforts in this town. She has been the hostess, I guess that's the proper word, for the call into the mayor. I think she's the buffer between the, the citizens calling and the mayor trying to come up with the right answer for these uh, calls. Uh, she's also been on the uh, library commission and has now presently serving on the uh, Arch architectural site HSAC. I can never remember how to say that. H control, if that's the old name of the thing. She's been active in the Cupertino League of Women Voters and on the monthly TV program with that group. She's the president of the Cupertino Women in Business. So we see you're active in almost all kinds of efforts, Pat. We thank you very much for your efforts and let me award you with your plaque. The next recipient is uh, Doris Knudsen. Doris is now was the first president of the Quota Club of Cupertino. That is a women in business organization that has been active in this community now for a couple of years. She is the group is dedicated to the service of the deaf and hearing impaired and helping her bring about the club's existence. She has helped coordinate both the Oktoberfest and the Dickens Fair at Valco Village. We'll give a little plug for that. Great. Okay. That November 1st and 2nd, Dickens Fair at Valco Village, all are attended, are invited to attend. Proceeds to the Quota Club. And the proceeds to the Quota Club. Anything else you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's all right. A little plugs that are no, no problem here. She's also been an active member of the Chamber of Commerce, and you can take a picture now for the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> and uh, she's been also actively involved in the Art and Wine Festival. Do you do any work or you just go to these festivals? <laughs> Doris, thank you again for your efforts. Watch out for the steps. The next recipient is Agnes Locker. As Agnes is coming forward, before I read the list of activities that Agnes has been involved in, I think that she should get an award just for being involved with my son and the, the Cub Scouts. <laughs> also, uh, another re resident of Cupertino for 22 years. That's a long time. She's also active in the PTA and has been past president of the PTA at both Regnart and Kennedy Schools. She's presently chairperson of the Library Commission here in town and was participated in the barcoding of the books in the library. And I might just mention at this point, for those that you are not aware, we will be expanding the library. The construction will be starting probably sometime next year and virtually doubling the capacity of the library to provide better service for the community. And we thank the Library Commission and everybody else for participating in that activity. She was chairperson of the Literature Creative Writing Group for the Cupertino Federated Women's Club, which meant to coordinated the fall and spring essay contests at the local schools and received awards from the California Women's Club for her work in the lifespan learning and tutoring programs that utilize volunteers. We thank you, Agnes, for those wonderful efforts and continue good work. Would uh, John Lope come forward, please? He's our next recipient. Thank you, John. We'll also give a plug for Straw Hat Pete's on your way up. <laughs> John is the owner and operator of the uh, Straw Hat Pizza here in Stevens Creek in Cupertino. Do you have any uh, words of free samples uh, no, or no, no, no coupons? <laughs> but his organization, his his restaurant. restaurant, thank you. I was, I was looking for the word. Excuse me. <laughs> His restaurant has sponsored a number of uh, recreational clubs, I think, both in the, for adults and youth in this community. I think you did the soccer and softball? Baseball. And baseball, right. Okay, and has also participated in a number of fundraising events for the different charities in the community. Has spoken in a number of school activities and has participated in the Faria Community Service Award, actually was a recipient of the Faria Community Service Award given this year, the first recipient. John, that's a good recognition of your fine work and we appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. 
The next recipient is Robert Reimers. I didn't saw. There he is. I was behind you all last night. <laughs> Roger is the current president of the Cupertino Host Lions Club. He was the chairperson of the 1986 Fishathon, which is an activity put on to give physically impaired persons an opportunity to enjoy the activity of fishing. I guess you'd call it a sport or the hobby or whatever it is. Anyway, they get a chance to go out and try and their hand at fishing, which I'm sure is a, quite a treat to these individuals who otherwise might not ever have this ability to do that. He's been also involved in a number of other activities. Among those are the Crippled Children's Society, the Cupertino Little League, Cupertino Holiday Basket Program, the Cupertino Library, and a number of special other events, including the Special Olympics and the Guide Dogs for the Blind. Purchase me. Roger, it sounds like you're a very busy person. We thank you for all your activities. And the last recipient in this category is Tom Von Joe Turnell. Is Tom here? Yeah. Tom is an employee of the Central Fire District and just recently was actually, I guess you might say, was the guiding force and was the overall coordinator and planning of the Public Safety Sunday, which we had here in town, was about two months ago, three months ago, at uh, De Anza College. And I don't know how many of you persons here attended that, but it was a very informative, very active day, which made use of many of the local facilities and gave the community an opportunity to see ways in which the public safety participates in this community. He's also been involved in the development of a storm drain natural waterway map, which I think are on sale on the back of the auditorium for $150 for those of you wishing to buy one. I mean, no family should be without one of these. No, Tom, cash. thank Cash, oh, cash, okay. Actually, that's a very... Probably not going to be a widely read map, but a very useful map for those in the, in the need of it. Tom, thank you very much for your efforts. It gives me now great pleasure to, to uh, introduce John Plungy another fellow council member who will deal with the volunteer awards recipients. John. I have to do this in order to see. Here, here we go. Good evening, and I wish to also extend my welcome to all of you in being here tonight to honor, honor these really wonderful people, and there are so many in our community. The particular category that I have tonight is volunteerism, and of course you've been hearing all these people have been volunteering, so what makes this category different from the others? Well, reading from the criteria that were established, it reflects service to the community for which the individual or group receives no monetary compensation. Well, that's like all the others, I think, too, except recipients are distinguished by the variety, quantity, or effectiveness of their volunteer involvement. And so the first of our recipients tonight, and I, I've been told she is not here, but that her son Matthew will accept the award. So could I have Matthew Downer, Marilee Downer's son? <laughs> Many times volunteers will uh, kind of help in one area or work on a variety of projects. But one of the things pointed out about Marilee is that she does it with uh, her leadership with humor, efficiency and love, and I think that's really good signs and, and good qualities in any leader. She's been president of the Sunnyvale Cupertino branch of the American Association of University Women, some 300 members. Her husband, Bob, is a principal in the Cupertino Union School District. She's the mother of two, and here's one of them right here. And you can see she has to be good. Look at, look at the sun here, okay? Uh, she has been a representative of the northern area coast at the state level. She chairs the Santa Clara County Interbranch Council. She has served as president of two units of the PTA. Uh, she has chaired the district, uh, school district PTA Brotherhood Essay Contest. And in the past, maybe not in this past year, but she's found time all along to be a campfire leader, a team mom, and a soccer coach too. 
She's also been involved as a member of the Music Boosters at Kennedy Junior High and Monta Vista Junior High. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, those of us at Homestead like to look at Monta Vista as a junior high. <laughs> Okay, I'll get me out of that one. Okay, and so on behalf of the, of the city and the city council, I wish to give this award to Marilee, and Matthew, we want you to take this home to your mother, if you would, please. And there you are, okay, and tell her thanks from us, okay? Okay. Good. Our second recipient also was unable to be here. Uh, her name is Myrna Jalesco, but we have Charlotte Chaston who is here to receive for her. Myrna has been a distinguished volunteer for the past 24 years in the PTA and various school activities. And in this past year, because the award does concentrate on the past year, she has volunteered more than 1,100 hours of her time. And most of these, or quite a bit of it, was spent as the co-chair of the Cupertino Community Holiday Basket Program. In 1985, she was co-chairman of that basket program, 1986 as well. In 1985, hospitality chairperson for the 6th District Council of the CFPTA, which is the Cupertino Federated Women's club. The T doesn't fit in there. Okay. She has also been uh, uh, treasurer of the Cupertino Federated Women's Club. She's a loving and caring person who is not only concerned about, you know, people as a group and uh, being sure that they are taken care of, but as she comes in contact with the individuals, she brings a special quality to them. She cares about them as individuals. So this past year, the project reached some 283 families. So on behalf of the uh, City Council and the City of Cupertino, Charlotte, we want to give you this award to take to Myrna. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Our next recipient is Ross Ketchum. Ross? This man is, is, is really an inspiration here uh, because while most of us are snoozing, resting comfortably in our beds in the morning, like at four or five o'clock in the morning, Ross is not. He's out there working and working for people. He is one who is dedicated to keeping the food closets of many organizations filled. Four days each week, he spends time cleaning, cleaning the loading docks of Alpha Beta and Long's drugs in exchange for dented, unmarked cans, day-old bread, whatever other damaged but still usable food items are available. He's lived in California for 50 years. He retired after some 30 years in the Navy, 12 years on active duty. He attends church at Moffett Field, has attended De Anza College to learn Spanish and German as well. Uh, he starts this at, what is it, I think between 4 and 5 each morning when you get out there? About 5.30, quarter to 6, I get out there. Slowing down a bit there, right? Well, okay. I, <laughs> I have to get up and wash my teeth and whatnot. Okay. Some before I leave. Take, take care of all those things. Okay, a wonderful, wonderful volunteer who does so much, not only in our community, but also he delivers food to the Rescue Mission, Star House, the Family Living Center, as well as our own Cupertino Community Services. So please join me in thanking Ross Ketchum. Might point out to our city manager, there's something for you to contemplate for your retirement, Bob. <laughs> okay. The next recipient, Rita Leitner. Uh,
Good seeing you tonight. <laughs> yes, nice seeing you. Okay, Rita is, again, one of these extraordinary people. Uh, as was written up in the little newsletter for the Cupertino Community Services, she faced uh, the problem, uh, namely, of losing a job. And as she said, after she filled out the unemployment forms, cleaned the house, said hello to the children and the like, she said, what can I do? How can I get involved? And she went over to Cupertino Community Services, where she has been a dedicated volunteer uh, for quite a while. What has she been doing? She's a regular volunteer driver for CCS. She uh, takes people about 10 or more rides a week. She delivers six or seven brown bags to seniors each week. She takes seniors on hiking trips, assisted in the landscaping of the percolation pond at McClellan and Bubb. She's lived in the area for 31 years, graduated from De Anza College in Notre Dame. She raised eight children on her own, all of whom graduated from St. Joseph of Cupertino School. And I think I would like to quote from uh, Rita herself uh, in this little volunteer story that came out. Uh, she says uh, she met some wonderful, gentle folks who need so little to feel, fill their lives. And she said she no longer has free time now, but she loves it. And she said, and I think this is, this is the best one, I knew this activity was much more rewarding for me than TV soap operas or game shows. Rita, thank you very, very much. <laughs> Charles Newman. Here's a man that I've come to know over the, the years, and I think much of the community more and more. Not that he goes out there and waves the flag and shoots off skyrockets and the like, but he's out there working all the time for this community. A man who lives in the community, is concerned about it, and acts in the community in so many ways. Uh, what has he been doing? He's been doing a variety of things. Uh, he has been involved with the Chamber of Commerce, a variety of activities. He has been chairman, I think a very important thing here, the Route 85 Task Force, which slowly but surely we're going to get Route 85 through Cupertino, and Charles has been one of the leaders here. He's employed as a real estate manager for Valco. He's past president of the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce. He's an accomplished musician and a classical music... <laughs> Well, what you, we qualify this, what they're really referring to, and this is something out of Charles' past, he and I competed in the same uh, uh, musical chairs dance contest at the bottom of a nightclub in Toyokawa, Japan, about two years ago. International competition. International competition, it claimed. <laughs> he didn't place as high as I did, but I had a little more body English there or something. Okay, he's been the Vice President for Government Relations of the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce. He's active in the Friends of Flint, as well as the Flint Center Advisory Resource Board. He has been a very, very active person in our Sister City program, and I know he's been instrumental as the program started in getting involvement in the Chamber and the business community, and this program has grown tremendously. He's a new board member of the Euphrat Gallery. He served on the search committee for the new Fremont Union High School District Superintendent. And as one of the employees of the district, I can say you did a good job in, in picking, the, uh, picking the superintendent. I don't know if that will help me for salary, but I mention that anyway. Uh, but I really, I think, as I said, Charles, when he's at work, you don't know it sometime, but he's out there doing many, many things in the community. The chamber activities, the Route 85, Flint Center, Euphrat Gallery, the school district, he's there, one you can count on. Charles, thank you very, very much. Our next volunteer, no relation to the preceding one, is Ken Newman. Ken? Here's a young man who came into our community and became very, very involved. 
And of course, one of his big centers of activity has been the Cupertino JCs, and particularly recycling. I think we take for granted sometimes, or we, uh, you know, we just toss things away, that everything is going to go on and on. And Ken is well aware and has done much to make the community aware of the fact that if we're to survive and save some of our resources, we have to do some recycling. So he's been very active in the JCs in the recycling program, running the recycling center there at uh, De Anza College. But I think the, the innovative thing that Ken came up with, and one for which we are recognizing him, is he is the man who initiated, first of all, the idea. He had the idea, and he followed it through to fruition. And that idea was that we should have a household poison collection day. You know, so often we have all these things in the house and we just kind of toss them aside, just toss them in the trash and Ken realized, you know, you can't do this. It's harming us down in the long run. So he said, let's try and do something about it. Well, it, you know, he just didn't sit back and say, okay, someone do something about it. He decided to do it. Made it cost effective, worked with the city, worked with the responsible agencies. And so it was that we had a very successful uh, day. And of course, that is going to be uh, continued. Other communities have picked up on it. So the good work that he's been doing is you know, much more than just in our own community, spreading far and wide. I might add, as a postscript also, uh, one of his volunteer activities also has been the fact that we had this young single executive secretary in our office, and he volunteered to marry her so that she wouldn't pick on us as much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ken Newman, thank you. After that remark, I may never get my mail again at City Hall. <laughs> Our final recipient, Teresa Ryan. What I'm going to say is not in any way a slight to the people who have preceded you up here. But it gives me particular pleasure to present this award for a volunteer in the community. And when you take a look at this young lady and her involvement in the community, I think we can all be proud of her and also feel a little secure for the future. And I see we have a number of young people here in the audience. Listen to what she's been doing, and she's been doing two and three times as much as some of us who are four and five times her age, let me tell you this. She has a real concern for others in the community, and this has been shown by her active involvement in the Interact Club at Cupertino High School. She served as chairman of the Senior Citizens Dinner. Now, I've taught in the high schools for many years, and I know sometimes you get a chairperson, and they get someone else, and they kind of sit back. It looks nice, you have the title. But here's what she did. She got actively involved. She put on a dinner for some 250 people. She got the people together, organized, and cooked a lasagna dinner for 250 people from scratch. I mean, they just didn't you know, get out the frozen foods and toss them in the microwave. She coordinated all of that. This was last year at the tender age of 16, right? <laughs> I'm embarrassing her, but that's all right. <laughs> So she, uh, she was involved in that, and for that, she received the Outstanding Interactor Award from the Cupertino High School Club. Also, she and a small group of students and three adults built a sewage ditch and did preliminary work on a swimming pool at a small orphanage 66 miles south of Ensenada, Mexico. She went down there and worked there. She hosted Mexican student from the small town of San Vicente near the orphanage of Rancho Santa Marta. She has served meals at Glide Memorial Church in San Francisco. She has a real concern, and this is what I'm happy to see because, as I said, being involved with the high schools, that there be interaction between her age group and the seniors in our community. So she goes over and plays bingo at the senior center with the, uh, with the seniors. She has worked in the food booths at the Oktoberfest at Valco Village. She has initiated a $100 contribution of food from Interact to the Cupertino Community Services. 
when she went on this dinner, she also had to round up some donations. The previous year, they had rounded up only about 30. She went out and obtained some 70 donations, got the community involved in helping her. And also, she has worked at the Friends of the Cupertino Library book sale, where she was in charge of the children's area. And now she's at that ripe old age of 17 now? Yes, she's done all this. Please join me in thanking this wonderful person. This is not to take anything away from her, but I think she's got some parents who uh, also have quite a bit to do with it and provide the inspiration, the Ryans out here, who have been very active in our community as well. Now I'd like to introduce my son and my colleague. <laughs> He's young enough to be my son, okay. My colleague on the city council, Phil Johnson. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I have the distinct honor of announcing the recipients in three different categories. And the first category is education. The Civic Service Award for Education is given to those who have positively impacted education in our city and community. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Dr. Robert DeHart to please come forward. Dr. DeHart has been a community college educator for more than 35 years. Since it opened in 1967, De Anza College has been led by President DeHart, a Cupertino resident. Under his leadership, De Anza College has provided the residents of Cupertino with quality education, a strong community services program, and outstanding cultural and recreational opportunities. And Dr. DeHart has been instrumental in bringing to our community center, Flint Center, the California History Center, Euphrat Gallery, and Minolto Planetarium. A very proud accomplishment of Dr. DeHart's, and rightfully so, is the naming of De Anza College as one of the best community colleges in California and one of the top five in the nation. We are fortunate to have such a dedicated individual working in our community, one who strives for quality. Congratulations, Dr. DeHart. Marianne Casella is our next recipient. Marianne, if you would come forward. Marianne has given an enormous amount of time, talent, knowledge, and service to the local school system. She has been a working member of the Cupertino High School PTA, including president from 1984 to July of 1986, as well as council vice president of the Cupertino Fremont PTA. She has volunteered countless hours to the Cupertino High School Boosters and Cupertino Tournament of Bands. She is a super schools volunteer and a super person, dedicated to making our schools the best that they can be. On behalf of the city, thank you and congratulations. The next recipient is Esther Owen. Esther is one of those truly dedicated teachers who never says no. She is a very special teacher who is always willing to really listen to students and parents and works very hard to find a successful solution to the most complex problems. Always willing to give that little extra time, Mrs. Owen truly cares about her students and their successes, as we can tell tonight. In spite of the heavy demands on a classroom teacher, she makes time to direct special programs and projects for the school. This year, she was a teacher representative on the PTA. And when you need a special favor, a program written or directed, you can always call on Mrs. Owen. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Next, would Jane Shifford please come forward?
And Jane has been an active volunteer for many years. Most recently, she is 1985-86 Community Education Chairperson for the Cupertino Federated Women's Club, where she is responsible for the Student Literature Scholarship Program and Student Art Contest. Her dedication in our local schools is far-reaching. She has volunteered her time for field trips, classrooms, and playground supervision, PTA Health Chairperson, Holiday Basket Chairperson, and Block Parent. This year, she received two prominent awards. The first, the Outstanding Community Service in the Field of Human Relations, and the American College Women Citizen of Achievement Award. I'm proud to present her with the Civic Service Award in Education. Congratulations. Thank you. The next category is Recreation. The Civic Service Award for Recreation is awarded to those who have provided opportunities for citizens to join together for the purpose of recreation and is awarded to those who have provided opportunities for citizens to join together for the purpose of recreation. Lily Nitta, will you please come forward? Lily fits this definition to a T and more. When Lily f has volunteered is recognition and has been re recognized as consistently a high quality of effort as well as the many of hours of time that she has dedicated in a wide variety of different activities. Her list of volunteer work for the Cupertino Judo Club is limitless. Everything that the club has been involved in in recent years, Lily has somehow been involved in and is and always in a big way. From steering committee member to summer and winter camp coordination to the Judo Club tournament, Lily is always there to provide support and hard work. She is also a talented seamstress who shares her love and patience with sewing classes at Kennedy Junior High School. And if that isn't enough, Lily is on the board of directors for the American Lung Association, where she's been involved with Camp Super Stuff, a camp for asthmatic children and other projects and programs. Thank you. Congratulations, Lily. The last category tonight happens to be business. The Civic Service Award for Business is given to those individuals which have been outstanding in their field or have achieved an honor worthy of recognition by their community. At this time, if Mr. Jim Jackson would please come forward. I don't have enough time tonight to tell you everything or even come close to telling you all the ways that Jim has contributed to our community. But I will highlight some of his major accomplishments. As founding chairperson of the Cupertino National Bank, Jim has helped to bring a new identity to our community. His awareness that capital formation is critical to the success of any, of any community is significant. Jim is a founding father of the Cupertino scene and spent many hours and many years uh, single-handedly writing it. He held a seat on the city council for eight years and was citizen of the year in 1982. He is an active member of the Lions Club, Rotary Club, and on the board of directors for the UFRAC Gallery. He is a lifelong supporter of the YMCA and has been active with our local Northwest chapter for over 20 years. In fact, I've recently come to appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> he most recently began planning last year with the Chamber of Commerce, De Anza College, and the City of Cupertino for a new program called Leadership Cupertino and will be the instructor for that year-long class. Jim has tons of energy and he loves to devote it to the community. Thank you, Jim. Our last recipient tonight is Daryl Stowe, and Daryl was unable to attend tonight's meeting. However, I still would like to tell you just a little about Daryl, who many of you know. The phrase, service with a smile, describes the gracious and giving way in which Daryl has uh, given to the community. He initiates, he participates, and follows through in a variety of different community programs. As a member of the Chamber of Commerce, Daryl's most notable contributions in his capacity as Vice President of Communications in 1985 to 1986 were the coordination of the Student Citizen of the Month and Year programs. Daryl also finds time to help the Cupertino Kiwanis Club with her annual casino night and other club events. And we're sorry that Daryl wasn't here tonight to accept the award, but we will get it to him promptly. Thank you, Daryl.
These fine people whom you've just seen honored represent all the many, many individuals in town and the groups who helped make Cupertino a really very good place to live. I've lived a lot of places all over the country and this is truly the best. At this time, I'd like to ask all of you who've just received a Civic Service Award to stand up one more time so that we can recognize you again, please. Thank you very much. This is just a token to try to say a little bit of what really needs to be said in great measure to all of you who helped so much, and particularly those whom we're honoring tonight. A very heartfelt thank you to all of you. And now, prior to the announcement of our city award honorees, we're privileged to hear from the internationally renowned Monte Vista High School Madrigals. Last year, as you may remember, they traveled in China. This year, they went to Japan. Those of you who have gone to Japan know how well they were treated. They are truly an emissary group wherever they go. So please help me bring out now the Monte Vista Mad Madrigals, led by Jack Lindsay.
thank you, Madrigal Singers and Jack. We're truly fortunate to be able to hear such fine voices, which are so well lit. Now I think we understand better how they help project a good image of this high school, of this city, of this state, and of this country, wherever they perform. And finally, the highlight of the evening. We are privileged to further honor two of the people who've received civic service awards tonight. These two individuals were selected by the committee and because of their commitment to the city and the groups and people in it. Their striving seemed to have been just a little harder and they seem to have achieved a bit more, at least in the perception of the committee members. While others may be equally qualified and may be honored at some future date, certainly these two individuals are indeed worthy of recognition. I know you've all been wondering who they are and waiting to hear their names. This year's recipients of the City Award, Lily, Nita, and Jim Jackson, please come forward. I have just a couple of words to say first. I will show you what it is they are receiving. It's a tray. It shows the state of California with the city indicated by a star on the state, if you can't see it, and their name engraved on the bottom. <laughs> Lily was recognized earlier this evening for her contributions in the area of recreation. Her efforts on behalf of the Judo Club have made a distinct impact on that group. And I think it's fair to say that without her efforts, it would not have achieved the success that it has. With all this, we also honor her on behalf of her efforts for the American Lung Association, Cupertino National Baseball League, and Kennedy Junior High eighth grade sewing class. Lily, I'm proud to meet you, and I'm very proud to personally, and on behalf of the city, to give you the city award. And Jim Jackson. Many of you know of his contributions over the past years. However, tonight we're recognizing his recent activities. He is founding chairman of the Cupertino National Bank and is able to have that formidable title because he saw the need for capital formation in this community. And he did something about it. Note the success of Cupertino National Bank. Also, because of his recognized abilities, his skills developed as an attorney, and perhaps most importantly, his creativity and his humor, he was designated to head up Cupertino Leadership Program. In other words, he developed the program as chief instructor. This is a short course sponsored jointly by the city of Cupertino, De Anza College, and the Chamber of Commerce. Jim, the city and all its residents are fortunate that you are so willing to give of your time and your efforts to help make the community better. And I'm very proud to be able to present this to you. This concludes tonight's program. Thank you very much for coming, and will you all join us for refreshments next door? Thank you.